Hello and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and this show today is really going to home in on dealing with, you know, all the tough times, both in the microscopic sense of the tough times of divorce, but also I think that what we're going to talk about today is really applicable on a broader scope to perhaps the tough times that we find ourselves going through in the world today. So I'm, I'm truly excited to have my guest with me here today. She, I, I'm going to use the word inspire, and I know that might feel a little overused this day, these days, but I, I mean it. I truly mean it. I, I've read her book. Um, I've spoken with her on a few occasions, and I come away with that feeling of being inspired. Um, and so when I was thinking about what we wanted to do for today's show, um, and, and I was looking through the book, I, I really honed in on her core message, which is living authentically is your path to getting through those tough times. So let me first introduce you to my guest today. Her name is Pamela Savino. Pam, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, Susan, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. I, I have really been looking forward to doing this um, taping because this message, I think, is going to really be so applicable on such a broad scope to so many things that we're facing. You know, we're, we're taping this um, as we've now been in the COVID era for about three months. We're facing a great deal of social unrest in our country and in the world. Um, financial crises are going on at varying levels for so many people. So there's really a great deal going on in our world. And there's also a great deal going on in the world of divorce. Unfortunately, I think all of that unrest has fueled unrest in our home, in our relationships, or, or maybe it's just been shining a spotlight on something that's been festering for a while. But so I think your message of living authentically is going to, to truly help people in so many different ways. So I'm thrilled that we're doing this here today. Thank you, I'm honored to be here. So I always, I, I love to give people a background on my guests because I really think that helps them to understand just how you know insightful the information they're going to hear is so let me just you know you are the founder of live authentically so you truly like believe at your core in your message um, and that's your life coaching business you are also the author of soar which is a fantastic title for those of you who are watching on the youtube channel i'm holding a copy of the book up and let me tell you jam-packed with information, this book. I, I highly recommend everybody you know get a copy and read it. It's available on Amazon, and of course, I'll have it in the show notes. Um, and you recently started your own podcast called the Live Authentically Show. Yep. So, <laughs> and actually, you and I just taped an episode for your show recently, which I'm looking forward to hearing. I am as well. I am as well. That'll be out soon. So, you know, I love... That we're going to talk about this, but I did want to start with how we met because I think that this also brings a layer in that will impact my listeners who are mostly people facing divorce. So you and I actually met through Beth McCormick, who is one of my good friends here in Chicago. And when I say that, I truly, Beth is just one of those people, right? I know she's a good friend of yours as well. Um, but Beth is also one of the leading family law and divorce attorneys here in Chicago. In fact, I call her the queen of high, um, high net worth divorce. She is really a leading figure, if not the leading figure in family law around here. And that's how you know her. She was your divorce attorney, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, she was. Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, that's not a surprise or privileged information because Beth actually wrote the foreword for your book. Yep, she did. And, and one of the things that she said in there, and, and this was the sort of the first lesson, I hope maybe people would pull from your book and from what you, you know, you have so authentically put out there. Beth said, most of the time as divorce attorneys, we drive the, the process, we drive the action and lead our clients through it. And she said that was reversed in your case, that you very much 
led your divorce, knew where you wanted to go, and she was there to help you facilitate. And I think that's so important for people to understand. How, but how did you get there? How did you become the driver of your divorce process? Well, I so firmly felt that I was stepping into my authentic reality for the first time in years. And I navigate my reality through energy. I navigate my reality spiritually. And I go in the direction life is taking me. I flow with it. And I do what feels right in the moment. So I knew that despite the way that this, um, the sequence of events, I was in the middle of a divorce, I knew that I was being led in the right direction. So I was confident in the direction life was taking me, even though in the midst of everything, we were going to have to rearrange some pieces. I knew I had the confidence and the trust and that faith-filled knowingness that I was going to be launched to a higher place. I needed to be willing to embrace growth. I needed to be willing to embrace uncertainty and dig super deep and, um, and catapult myself to a higher place. And that's, you know, that's really the core of your message, I think. And people will understand that. I love that we started with that because I think as we walk through um, our discussion today, it, it gives great insight into how you came to that place and how you truly live authentically and how that's brought you. I like the, the vision of you catapulting, um, flying through the air to a, a forward uh, place. But you know, let's go to living authentically or, or that particular phrase, because as I mentioned, it's the name of your podcast. It's the name of your business. If you go and look at the Live Authentically website, it's very much embedded in your messaging. So, you know, at a high level, what does that phrase mean to you? What are you saying with that? What I'm saying to me, live authentically means living a life that is true to who you are, a life that is true to who you are at the deepest core of your being. So not a life that is consistent or congruent with what society tells us we should be doing, not a life that is congruent that is um, with what our parents are telling us, um, not a people pleasing life, a life that represents who you are. And that means aligning your behaviors and thoughts and actions and feelings and, and having your physical world, your outer world consistent and reflect what's going on inside your heart with, with your heart and soul. It's that feeling of everything being in alignment. And I know that feeling so well now. It's, I started to feel that during my divorce process. I started to embody that. And I can feel it so deeply because I lived in a very inauthentic place for so long. I only know authenticity because I know um, inauthenticity as well. I knew it quite well. And my thoughts and actions and behaviors and feelings weren't all in alignment. And my physical world, my outer world wasn't congruent with what was going on in my heart, but I was in fear mode. I was holding on to what was comfortable and known and familiar. I was scared to step into a new reality, scared to make a change. But ever since I decided to choose faith over fear, that's when I, that's what allowed me to step into my authentic authenticity. I think so many people listening right now are going to hear that and have it resonate right inside of them. Um, it does with me very much, you know, that, that feeling of, you know, living inauthentically and what it means to make the shift to live authentically. And it may sound like a small thing. It's actually probably the biggest shift you can, you can make. Um, and it, because that's your message, I, I was looking through the book again, and I really, you know, I told you this just before we started taping, there's a chapter in your book, it's chapter 14. And the um, title of that chapter is Tough Moments. Um, and you share very authentically some tough moments that happened in your divorce um, during that time. Each one of those is, is almost, I would say, a universal moment that I think so many people face uh, in their divorce. Um, so I want to talk about those actual moments because I think that you shared things that will help people move through and recognize what's happening in those moments for them. But also I think it's where the shift from inauthentic to authentic living happens. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a wonderful um, chapter. The whole book is good, but you know, if we went through the whole book, as I said, we'd be talking for the next couple of days. This is <laughs> jam packed with information. Um, so you do talk about 
um, the first part of living inauthentically came from the decision that you and your husband made after deciding that you were going to get a divorce but you held off on telling your children because you felt it was better to wait until a certain point in time to tell them. And you said that led to a very inauthentic experience for the two of you. So it, that is something that I hear from clients and from listeners all the time, that particular um, paradigm of knowing mm -hmm. as the parents what's happening, but not feeling it's time to tell your kids. So can you explain what happened there? Absolutely. So we decided in March of 2017 that we would be going down the path of divorce. And we thought very carefully about delivery of the message to the kids, the timing. We didn't want to jeopardize the rest of their school year. So we decided that we would allow them to finish out the school year and um, tell them we, we carefully chose a date in June that we would tell them. And I have to say, those three months were absolutely the most challenging part of the divorce process because we weren't living authentically. I mean, I felt like I was straddling two completely disparate realities. Sometimes it was business as usual. We would have this front and we were having, you know, celebrating the kids' birthdays jointly with both families and everything was kind of okay on the outside. <clears throat> and what was going on behind the scenes was very, very different. Divorce attorneys were being contacted. Separate houses were being purchased. We were kind of surreptitiously tiptoeing around, making sure nobody saw papers laying on the island. And I just felt so incredibly, it just felt smothering. You know, it just felt smothering to be just um, withholding information, harboring secrets, just, it just felt so inauthentic. Um, you know, conversations we had were just not congruent with what was actually happening. And it's, it's really hard. I mean, it just becomes so energetically weighing. It just felt cumbersome. And the day that we told the kids was actually, um, there were a number of emotions, obviously, but it was so incredibly freeing. Because I said, okay, finally now, I just energetically felt so much lighter. I said, now we're able to step into our respective authentic realities. Yes, we're going down different paths, but the silver lining, the good news is that they, it represents who we are. We are on a path, now we are on a path to happiness. We are on a path to authenticity. And that is something we would not have been able to achieve in our marriage. Well, and that's, you know, they always say the truth shall set you free. And, and there's yeah. actually such truth behind that truth. Um, it, it really, uh, secrets can really weigh us down all yeah. kinds of secrets, but that was the secret you were, you were keeping from your children for the best of intentions, but it led to okay. a lot of inner struggle. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it was a, to say that it was a personal hell would be an understatement. It just was not, it didn't feel right to me. I didn't like how I felt physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, so that day that we were able to step into our truths and tell them was just so incredibly freeing. And I thought, I just thought a lot about, I have to say this idea of living authentically really was born during that time period. And I will say that was the, absolutely the most challenging part of the divorce process because I wasn't living authentically, but that's where I did the deepest soul work. I mean, I really wanna highlight that is that's where we find our greatness is in those challenging moments. You know, I had a choice. I, I had to dig really, really deep. That was the only way I was going to be able to get through it. And I looked at everything from a number of different ways and I realized that so many people are living inauthentically. And again, it's not a judgment, it's an observation. And it's something I really wanted to bring out in the open and talk about it because that's how we grow, that's how we heal. And it's not just limited to divorce, it's not just limited to relationships. It could be anything as, you know, you're in a job that you aren't, you know, that you don't love going to every day, or you're living in an area that just stifles you creative, you know, creatively, or um, you're living with an expiration on your, on your marriage, or, you know, any number of things. You're homosexual and you're scared to step out and let your friends and family know who you really are. I mean, I, my heart breaks for people who can't just let their true selves show and let their light shine in the world. It, it, that's, <clears throat> that's, that actually, it hurts your heart, right? To, to think of that. Um, because I think, sadly, more of us are living that way with secrets, inauthentically, not a, feeling that it's okay to let our true selves out 
because we're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of um, societal norms. Um, last uh, week, I had Susan Eckstein um, on my show, and she is a mother who voluntarily made the decision to allow her children to reside primarily with her ex-husband uh, because she felt that that was the the best choice for them, but then went through a great deal of internal shame and judgment of her on her own, but also external shame and judgment, mostly from women, which is a very sad statement. Um, and then wasn't until she was able to own it and claim it and, and put it out there in the world by coming on shows like mine and talking about it, um, mm -hmm. she was living inauthentically. She was hiding that and keeping it a secret. So those are the stories that I think are, you know, the, that so resonate in our world today. Um, and that moment when you did step into authenticity and told in your, this particular case, told your children, um, you know, so telling the children that you're getting a divorce, hot topic, right? This is such a touchy moment. There are so many wrong ways to do it. Um, and I've seen them all, unfortunately, over 30 years of divorce practice. Um, you and your husband, I would say, did much of this correctly. Um, and, and, but in, in that moment, you write about this in the book, and I, I, this struck me as well. Um, you had to step up and take the reins in that conversation, but we're not expecting to. Right. Um, and that was a pivotal moment for you as well. So I wonder if you could describe that because many of my listeners are facing that conversation. Yeah, I mean, that's really, that's a conversation that I obviously will never forget. Um, it's something that we crafted very carefully in the months leading up to telling the kids. And to give credit where credit is due, I will say we did work with divorce coaches who were incredibly skilled at helping us craft the right message. Um, so we were very prepared. And so we went in, we had it all planned out. My um, soon-to-be former husband was going to be the one delivering the message because based on, you know, historically speaking, he would be able to be the one that would remain emotionally centered and I would generally be the, you know, kind of have the, the emotions flowing. And <clears throat> so we gathered the kids on a Saturday morning and sat them all down on the family room couch and you could tell from the looks on their faces that they looked like, you know, they were expecting us to tell them they were going to Disney World or something. And so we all kind of gathered and there was a, a pause and I looked over at my soon to be former husband and it was pretty clear to me that I was going to be the one to deliver the message. So somehow just completely emotionally centered. And I, I don't even, even as a writer, it's hard for me to even put words around the feeling because it just felt, it felt like a force outside of me just kind of took over. I don't know where the strength came from. I mean, I, I, I do believe it came from, you know, the universe, universal energy, just that, you know, just feeling so completely aligned and confident in the messaging. And I just took the reins and I just, you know, I just started to speak and I said, we wanted to get you guys together to tell you that your dad and I have decided to get divorced. Some things will be changing and other things will be remaining the same. But regardless, I said, we will always love you and we will always care for you. And your dad and I will always be an important part and a very special part of your lives. Excuse me. And we, I got that in, in about 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, because I knew we had a very narrow window and anything else that I said beyond that would just be lost in the emotions and everything that was swirling. So I took that, you know, a very, you know, condensed message and got that in, in about 15 seconds and um, their reactions were varied. You know, one yeah. left the room and one said, I don't want divorced parents. And the younger ones asked questions. And, um, but I just felt so free. I just, I felt free because we were in that authentic space. And we answered the questions that we had answers to and told them we would keep them updated. And the dialogue started flowing. And, you know, it was to be totally authentic. I mean, I'm not one to sugarcoat. I'm kind of a tell it like it is person. Those were a challenging couple of days. I mean, we had just, you know, we just told the kids, their parents are getting divorced. We're, we're each moving into respective separate homes. We're leaving the marital home. I mean, talk about a massive amount of change going on. So there were a variety of emotions, but we just continued to allay them and let them know that we would work through this together and reassure them that they would still see both of us very frequently during the weeks. 
Well, and I think, you know, th what you just said there about there being a high level of emotion, of course, there, right? There's, of course, there's a high level of emotion, but addressing it with truth, honesty, and the constant reiteration of love, care, and support is, is, you know, lying to your children or sugarcoating it as you just said, you know, use that phrase, you're not doing them any favors. You do need right. to help them to understand the change that's coming and process it. And there's a, a, you know, another story here in this chapter, but this one really jumped out as well. Your daughter called you out. She, yeah. she, she came right at you. And this was another one I heard where your daughter questioned your choices and questioned your commitments that you had made in the past, um, around the phrase till death do you part. Uh, and I, I've heard that from parents as well. Uh, so your kids may challenge you. Um, but I thought your response to your daughter was so well handled and nuanced. So can you share that with listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So just one day out of the blue and, uh, you know, she just came up to me and said, you know, she challenged me. She called me out on the carpet and said, you guys stood before your friends and family and said, till death do you part. What happened to that? And I said, honey, you're absolutely right. Let's sit down and have this conversation. I mean, I thought about that for a long time before I decided to get divorced. We did. We pledged this in front of our friends and family. What happened? And you know, and I did, I said to her, I said, I know this is really challenging because I always validate the, the feelings. I said, I know this is really hard to understand, but, um, you know, I said, your dad and I made the best decision that we could make at the time. And based on our life experiences at the time, I kind of put it into sort of, you know, more kid friendly terms. But I said, I know it's hard for you to understand this given your age. And I said, Rom adult romantic relationships are incredibly complicated. And I said, people change and grow over time. And, you know, your dad and I have gotten to a point that the love that exists between us is not like married people. And I said, we all come into our, you know, we spend time together in much the same way that we have different friendships that may last for a certain period of time. I said, your dad and I have a soul contract and our purpose for coming together was to bring these four gifts into the world, these four children into the world. And once we did that, we were no longer the well was dry. There was, we were no longer in a position to, to be in a relationship, a marriage with each other. So, um, you know, I explained it to her like that. And she, again, she continued to challenge me from time to time on that. But every single time I dug deeper and was able to address it kind of from a different perspective and help to kind of reassure her and kind of color in some of the questions that she had. Well, then you didn't run from the conversation either, which a lot of parents feel you know, when uh, there are certain conversations that are not appropriate to have with children, right? Like why are mom and dad breaking up? Well, because daddy cheated on mommy and, you know, there's a conversation not to have about why death till death do us part is it didn't work out. But having that nuanced conversation with her in terms that she could understand, um, even if she couldn't accept them, you know, or it took time and, and further explanation, I think that that's a critical component of this is, is supporting her in not invalidating her question or her feelings or saying it's not none of your business, but you know, it's, you can't understand. Um, mm -hmm. You, you tried to explain it and you put it in terms um, that, that at least conveyed the reality of the situation for her. And again, was very supportive and loving of, of your children. So that, you know, for everyone who's out there, who's going to be facing these tough conversations or uh, has, have gone through them or have more ahead of them, the wonderful approach to that. I, I really, yeah. I found that so uh, warming to think about the two of you sitting there having, I know it was a tough moment, but yeah, it was really tough. Yeah. yeah. No mom wants to be there. <laughs> Right. But those are the tough moments. I mean, I grew a lot just through that conversation and thinking about, you know, delivering that message. And I did focus on trust. I focused on, I, I said to her, I said, I know there's a lot you don't understand right now, but please trust us that we are making the best decision for everyone involved. And she actually did say to us, I will share. She said to me a couple of days ago, she said, I actually am glad you guys got divorced. She actually now sees three years later that the quality of everyone's life 
that kids included is superior to what it was when we were together. And so, and I reassured her, I kept reassuring her over the years. And when we had these conversations, you will get to a point where you will see this through different lenses, but you just have to trust and just be patient that you will get there. And we did get there a couple of days ago. So it's wow. Yeah. That's like the mic drop. <laughs> right. that's, oh, so, so listeners, that's, uh, you know, not, you don't always get that blessing because even if it does happen, sometimes kids won't, don't, won't share that with you. Um, you know, especially when they hit a certain age, I don't know how, how old is your daughter now? She's 16 now. Okay. She was yeah. 13 at the time. Yeah. But I do so. think it's because we have a foundation of all of those, um, those, um, vulnerable, open, honest, transparent conversations. Yeah. I do think that's why that moment was made possible is because we did have those conversations that validated her emotions and um, they were deep conversations. And I think that's why we were able to have the moment that we did the other day. I'm so glad that you got that moment because that's, you know, all the hard work that you've done over the years that I think that's something that will stay with you forever. Um, and something for those who are listening to understand it, the hard conversations are what lead to those breakthroughs and to those moments. Okay. Um, you know, there was one other thing that jumped out of this particular chapter. And it's really, I think it's funny because it's really maybe an eight page chapter. It's not the longest chapter in the world, but you shared so much and so many you know, of those seminal moments of divorce. And there's a, a, a phrase you use in the chapter, um, having it all, um, they have it all. And how many couples, when we hear they're getting a divorce, have we thought, oh my God, but they're the perfect family. They're the perfect couple. They have it all. Um, one, I think that just goes to show that we have no idea really what's going on behind the public facade that we all put out there, um, which may be an authentic or inauthentic facade, but your family was definitely one of those that from the outside had it all. And I think that did that play into the, the inauthentic living? Absolutely. I think so, because I was living a life that was true to what I thought I should be doing or what society was telling us we should be doing. I had all, we had all of the boxes checked. So I thought because of that, I thought we were doing it right. I thought, well, other people are probably just struggling with the same things we are or whatever, but um, we had it, you know, we did have it all from the outside, you know, the big house, we, I was a full-time mom, you know, my former husband had a high powered career, the perfectly symmetrical, well-balanced two boy, two girl family, color coordinated, you know, picture or outfits in the Christmas card, <laughs> literally had it all like was like postcard perfect. And on the inside, it was very, very different. You know, we were both individually unhappy. And, you know, while it wasn't a situation where there was, you know, abuse or alcoholism or any of that ugliness, there was just an unsettled feeling. There was just this feeling of emptiness and dissatisfaction. And it was really kind of a depressing thought to know that we would never be able to achieve that feeling of happiness and fulfillment in our current relationship. And that's, that's a pretty difficult thing to live with. Thinking okay. that, you know, you're, you're trying to uphold this image again, not for other people, but it was, I thought we were doing the right thing. And you know, people were shocked when we announced that we were getting divorced because we were like that family, like that perfect family from the outside. But again, what was going on the, on the inside was very, very different. And so I think I always um, tell people, you know, that you have to be able to answer that question from the inside. You know, do I have it all? <clears throat> not it all. And you have to define what is it all? You know, you're not going to get that feeling from the house, the cars, the vacations, the stuff, the shiny objects. I mean, to me, having it all now, I have it all now and I live in a different house and I'm a single parent and, you know, I find that from other places. I, I have it all. I have happiness. I have peace. I have fulfillment. I have joy. I have connection. I have truth. I have authenticity. And I feel just so incredibly um, different now than I did back then when I appeared to have it all from the outside. 
And that's it. for anyone who's who is watching the YouTube, you actually radiate all of those characteristics. I mean, I can tell yeah. just by looking at you that you are living in that authentic space, that you are in connection and your worlds are aligned. Um, that may sound a little woo-woo for people, but I deal with people every day who are not in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and you, after 30 years, you get attuned to who is living um, in, in a space that works for them and who is not. Um, you are clearly a person who is. Uh, so I, one thing, uh, one last thing out of the book, and then, and then I want to talk about how people can get in touch with you. But there, at the end of each chapter, you give some um, little exercises, not little, but exercises um, that are really helpful. I mean, they, they, I strongly urge people to actually do that work. Um, because you can read and absorb, but it's actually those little exercises that I think will help you to expand and grow. But one, this is a tool that we as mediators use all the time and something that I have found in my personal life as I've been going through a great deal of difficulty and change myself in the past few years to be very powerful. And so you, at the end of this chapter, you talk about people reframing their tough moments. Um, and I wonder if you could walk people through that exercise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in every tough moment, you have a choice, right? We can either allow that tough moment to pull us down into those lower feelings like guilt and anger and animosity, or we can choose growth. And so you can reframe any experience through the lens of growth. You can ask yourself through any challenging experience, what am I meant to learn from this? how can I allow this experience to help me become a better person? Instead of choosing hate or anger, how can I choose compassion? How can I step into empathy? How can I attempt to see the world through the other person's lenses? All of those questions are growth-based, they're growth-centered, and they're questions that will help us to move forward. So I believe that in every moment of, of those, you know, every tough moment, we can choose, choose growth and, and we can, we can make it an experience that propels us forward. It, it, there's so much. I hope everyone just get a pen out and write those questions down. Re rewind and write the questions down or look in the show notes because I'm going to write them down for you. Those questions uh, that Pam just recited about how can I choose you know, to find empathy here? How can I choose compassion? Those are the, the keys to reframing, I think. Everything that is happening in your world, if you're going through a divorce, if you're going through a difficult time, if you are out protesting in the streets or, or angry at the people who are out protesting in the streets or whatever is happening for you, those are the questions. That reframing process is how you grow. I, I love that you shared that. Thank you. Um, please people reframe. So um, and those, that's just one little, little tip from, from Pam, but Pam, you work coaching with people. You also do group workshops. How can people find out more about your coaching, get in touch with you? Yeah, you can, um, you can actually have a Facebook group. So you can check us out at liveauthentically.today slash FB. You can also email me at Pamela at liveauthenticallytoday.com. And um, you can also find out more information on my website, which is www.liveauthentically.today. You've got to be able to remember that people live authentically. <laughs> um, I also want to point out the book is available on Amazon. I will have soar. Um, I will have a link in the show notes and then you have a wonderful free gift just for listeners. Um, if you want to tell them about it, uh, there will be an exclusive link in the show notes so they can access it. Absolutely. So I've put together a guide called five powerful ways to embrace your authentic self. So it's just ways to get you started on this path of authenticity. And this is something that I wish for everyone. I mean, that is my one wish for the, for people in this world is that they are able to step into their truth. I hope that, you know, we can only in these half hour episodes really skim the surface and there's so much here, but there's hope in what you're saying. There's, um, you know, the, the real, there's reality in what you're saying. There's truth in what you're saying. There's compassion, there's empathy in what you're saying. I, I hope that this is going to be that step forward for the listeners and, and for everyone out there, because this is what we need 
in our world today. So thank you for joining me today, Pam, and sharing. Thank you so much for having me.